What is math? And why learn math? What remains after school, after the tests are over? In our daily life, do we ever need anything more than simple arithmetic? Let's start with the definition of mathematics. Math is a language. Like any language, it originates from our human brains and it is built upon itself. The peculiarity is that, unlike other languages, math is based on pure logic and it happens to be the language of nature. It is used to describe the objects and phenomena which surround us, or at least an abstract version of it. This language allows one to make abstraction of reality, that is, extract the essence of reality into a more general concept. Abstract concepts are more difficult to grasp than concrete examples, but the advantage is that many problems in physics, chemistry, engineering, medicine, finance, social science can be modeled by a same single mathematical problem. Then math is a series of facts about these abstract concepts. Unfortunately, these facts are too often presented as a series of recipes for the students to learn. That's the best way to make it boring. What should turn you on is not the facts themselves, but understanding where they come from. Math is also all about patterns, recognizing patterns and using them to answer questions. Arithmetic is the study of patterns in quantities or numbers. Algebra is the study of patterns in functions and structures. Calculus is the study of patterns in change. Geometry, the patterns in space and shapes. Logic, the patterns that can be used for reasoning. Statistics is a study of patterns for probability and chances. Let's illustrate all that with a simple example. Say you want to order a pizza. The menu on the website shows three sizes, small, medium and large. Of course the large one is more expensive, but you want the best bang for your buck. You want the one with the best cost performance. The first thing to do is to model this real-world problem into a simple, tractable math problem. We make some assumptions that the pizza is a perfect circle, that the performance is just the area of the pizza, and that the cost is simply the price. Reality is much more complex. A pizza is not a perfect circle. The crust is not as tasty as the center, unless it is filled with cheese, the cost should include the probability of getting a stomachache, extra, extra. However, for your purpose of buying a pizza, that model will do. So the cost performance is the area divided by the price. The area A is pi times the radius square, and the price P is, well, let's seek for a pattern. P is the diameter minus 1.5, right? If you know only arithmetic, you can simply draw a table with three columns for small, medium and large and calculate for each one the value A over P. You get 9.2, 10.8 and 12.3. So the pizza with the maximum cost performance is a large one. That's enough for our simple pizza problem. But you lost the abstract quality. In the abstract realm or mathematical realm, we are maximizing the function f of d, which we can write simply like this. In algebra, we learn functional analysis. The derivative tells us that this function has a negative slope between 1.5 and 3, and a positive slope for d larger than 3. We also learn limits, which tell us that the function goes to infinity, and we learn asymptotic behavior, which tells us that the curve looks like a line for large d. This allows us to make more general conclusions, like even if there was any pizza size available, the largest one would still be the best, except if the pizza were less than 3 inches in diameter. The worst pizza is 3 inches. Another general conclusion is that for pizzas larger than 8 inches, the cost performance is roughly proportional to the diameter. Of course, in our simple three pizzas problem, we didn't need more than simple arithmetic and simple geometry. But if you were the employee who decide the price of each pizza, 
you will have to model customer behavior and use more complex mathematical techniques. It's quite hard to think about a job that doesn't make use of algebra. But even if you find a job that doesn't require any mathematical techniques, here's what remains after school that is extremely useful. It's the way of thinking analytically or logically that you learn in math class. Organizing the information, going from facts to facts in an objective way while taking into account every assumption. This kind of thinking will help you make the right decisions in life. Sometimes gut feeling is not enough. Logic is an invaluable skill. It's also problem solving. What you do in math is to turn a problem around until you find a good angle of attack. On top of that, there are many specific math skills that are very useful in daily life. Probabilities will tell you if the odds of winning the lottery are worth the price, if you should take the extended warranty, that you should be more afraid of sodas than sharks, that anecdotes should not dictate your choices, and how to interpret scientific studies. Geometry will be very helpful when you renovate your house. Calculus will help you understand the growth of capital or how to save money when using a thermostat. It will also teach you how to divide a complex idea into several simple steps and therefore argue a point in a convincing and constructive way. Fourier analysis will avoid you getting screwed when buying expensive headphones. So to summarize, math is the logical language of nature. Once the complexity of reality has been reduced into abstract concepts, math is the perfect tool to express and understand these concepts. Math is more about the whys than the hows. There are always concrete applications behind the math you learn, and if your math teacher doesn't know the applications, your physics, biology or economics teacher will. The most important application is indirect, it's analytic thinking and problem solving. I hope that this video made you hungry for knowledge, not only for pizza.